Leah, new from overnight, a suspect is in custody after a tense SWAT standoff in central Bakersfield. Police say the situation started around 8 p.m. last night when patrol officers spotted Mario Melendez, who had an outstanding felony warrant for narcotics and was evading arrest. They tried to stop his vehicle, which police tell 23 ABC was stolen, but Melendez fled on foot and barricaded himself inside a home on the 100 block of I Street. That's when Bakersfield police SWAT arrived and about 10 homes nearby were evacuated. Evacuated. I've heard that they've been there since 7:30 tonight, and they've, they've got the whole place locked down. They've kicked all my customers out of the houses. You know, it's disgusting. Anything else? And it's been hours and hours and hours, and it's going to go on for another hours or hours and hours. At about 11:30 p.m., Melendez peacefully surrendered. It remains unclear if he was ever armed. The first of some 300 Green Berets President Obama ordered to Iraq will be arriving almost immediately, and the Green Berets will serve as advisors and trainers for the Iraqi security forces. They'll actually be going out with those forces, embedding with those forces, and not just in Baghdad. It's considered a rather risky mission, but Iraq's biggest oil refinery now has 500 ISIS militants surrounding it. Iraqi security forces are inside, but they're unable to get out, and they cannot get reinforced in because the roads are all controlled by militants. And Sunni extremist fighters have taken control of a facility Saddam Hussein once used to produce and store chemical weapons. The production plant still contains a stockpile of old weapons, but U.S. officials doubt there's any material of military value. Iraq says it's fighting back with airstrikes, but many of its ground troops have left the fight. Happening this morning, hundreds of teams will come out to Stramler Park to duke it out on court. And instead of an old-fashioned volleyball game, well, players will have to face the mud. 23BC's Leslie Marine is live from Stramler Park with how your family can still be a part of the muddy mess. Good morning, Leslie. All right, can't wait for that. The Dirty Ballers. That's that's your name, right? <laughs> yes, they're the Dirty Ballers. All right, can't wait to see them in action. Thanks for that, Leslie. Well, meanwhile, the city's fire department is celebrating a great achievement as not many people are able to accomplish this. Yesterday, the Bakersfield Fire Department announced a big change in its rating, going from an ISO Class 3 fire department to a Class 2. The department's chief says this is an accomplishment they've been trying to achieve for more than 10 years. The ISO ranking focuses on key components of fire protection standards that will affect insurance rates and future funding. Well, if you've ever dreamed about owning a new home, what better time than now to make that dream a reality? The St. Jude Dream Home Giveaway is now less than a week away, so you should hurry if you want to get your ticket. You can find the home in the Windmere neighborhood in Seven Oaks. Tickets are $100, and all the money goes towards fighting childhood cancer. The last open house tours are taking place this weekend. You can buy your ticket by calling 1-800-385-9134, or you can go to Kern School's Federal Credit Union or Ashley Furniture Home Store. The last day you can buy your ticket is next Thursday, June 26th. New details from the South Korean sunken ferry will tell you who's now being charged with crimes in that disaster. Thanks, Leah. Limits on the NSA surveillance of Americans could soon be on the way with the House backing a new amendment. The legislation would require the NSA to obtain a warrant to search government databases for information on U.S. citizens. It would also prohibit surveillance backdoor gadgets on commercial tech products. The the amendment is attached to a $570 billion defense bill, which passed yesterday. Now the legislation just needs to pass it in the Senate. The CEO of the company that owns South Korea's sunken Seawolf Ferry has been charged with accidental homicide, also violation of maritime safety law. Prosecutors say Kim Hansik caused the ferry to be unstable by adding extra cabins and overloading cargo. Kim's lawyer argues the ferry could have been capsized due to crew negligence. Nearly 300 people died in that tragic accident back on April 16th. Lance Armstrong's back in the news why a judge dismissed a suit brought forth by his attorney regarding his doping allegations. And Malibu High School is giving tours, but not to students. Why health officials are concerned about the safety in the premises. Kern County's only local weekend morning news will be right back. 
I wore my sunny dress for you, yes, Leah. Yes, you did. Yep. I like it. Uh, thank you. All right. <laughs> Thanks for that, Leah. Well, coming up, AIDS Compassion Week is here. We'll tell you about several events going on to promote awareness of the disease. And a local program is giving a spin on summer school, what they're doing for teens. Coming up next, right here on Kern County's only local weekend morning news. 75 low-income students earn something that kids work their whole childhood for. It was all in thanks to the Farm Workers Institute of Education and Leadership Development, also known as FIELD. The organization was founded by Cesar Chavez and is led by his daughter Liz Chavez in hopes of providing rural Kern County residents the opportunity to get the skills they need in order to succeed. For most students, summer school is about waking up early, going to school, and hitting the books. But 23 ABC's Mark Christian tells us about a unique summer school program at West High School. And good morning. Thanks for joining us at 830. I'm Lindsay Adams. And I'm Leah Steinberg. Whether you're playing in the mud, heading up to Tehachapi, or just laying out by the pool, it's a great day because it's the first day of summer. I know. That's exactly right. And Leslie, she has some skills out there. She did. I really can't wait to see what she's got outside. Definitely. I know. And it is a good day to practice that. 100 degrees, though. Yeah. Thanks, Leah. Tehachapi police are looking for more victims of a possible child serial rapist. Police say Scotty Carter used booze to lure a 14-year-old girl to his apartment where he beat and raped the teen. A neighbor heard the attack and called police. Police say they don't think this is the first time Carter's done this. He actually was a suspect uh, for lewd acts with a minor by our department twice in 2012. Uh, we never have enough evidence for filing a case. Uh, this time we've got a pretty solid case. And Tehachapi police are hoping the earlier victims and any other possible victims will come forward so they can charge Carter for those attacks as well. As our severe drought continues, new data from the USDA is giving some hard numbers on the now dire situation. 23 ABC's John of Genovese looked into how the now exceptional drought could have lasting consequences here locally. All right, Leslie, I saw you hitting a couple of balls out there and you were doing great. So you going to join in later on the game? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to show off, so <laughs> maybe, maybe not. We'll see. All right, that's good enough. Thanks for that, Leslie. Okay, well, we're covering California now as $108 billion. That's the budget for the next fiscal year, which Governor Brown signed yesterday. And with that, good news comes to Kern County and Assemblyman Rudy Salas. The passing of the budget means that ag education funding is secured for the upcoming year. That's a staple here in Kern County.